Welcome once again to our daily devotions, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Poppy. Thanks for tuning in. Our Bible reading for today is the Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Epiphany, and it takes us to the Old Testament prophet Amos. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 to 15. In that day, I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Spirit through Amos gives us many amazing word pictures to examine and to ponder today. In that day, Amos says, a little bit later, God says, Behold, the days are coming. The Holy Spirit through Amos is talking about a future date, a future time, something that we can look forward to, something that God's people can wait for in joyous expectation and anticipation. Well, what will it be like? The first part of our text talks about raising up the booth of David that is fallen. The booth of David, the tabernacle. We read in the New Testament about the festival of booths. Remember, the tabernacle was the portable worship house of the people of God. It was a big tent. It was a tent that the children of God carried around with them during their wilderness wanderings. It was a place where they worshipped. But more importantly, it was a place where God met his people. God dwelled in the tabernacle. The people could see and sense and even smell the presence of God. God dwelling with his people to care for them, to love them, and to save them. Just like in the days of old, the tabernacle will be repaired and God will dwell with his people. Verse 13, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. We've got a, a wild, amazing picture of before the reaper, the harvest can take place. They're already coming in with a new planting, a new celebration of taking care of the field. Remember what happened to the children of Israel when they were carried off into captivity. The houses that they built were lived in by someone else. The fields that they planted were harvested by their enemies. The grapes that they nurtured to fruition were made into wine by, by foreigners. How hard that must have been for the children of Israel. But those days will be reversed. Those days will be restored. Those days will be no more. How and why? Because in that day, 
That day that God promises, that day that the children of God should look forward to, that day God will keep his word. He will send the Messiah, the Savior into the world who will dwell with his people and he will make right all that which had been wrong and devastating for the people of God. My friends, in this season of Epiphany, God has lifted the curtain. He has revealed to us that he keeps his word, that he is who he claims to be, and that God in the flesh, Jesus, is the fulfillment of these prophecies. Amos's prophecy, all the prophecy of Scripture, points forward to the person and work of Jesus, who tabernacles among us. God's real presence. He's here to care for us, and to comfort us, and to save us. God in the flesh, Jesus lives and dies and rises again. He is with us as we hear his word and receive his gifts. And he promises, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. My friends, whatever bad memories or misfortunes that you've had in the past, any time that you have been think, tempted to think that God has abandoned you or forgotten you, hear the word of God this day. God's love for you in Jesus is never ending. God's love for you in Jesus is sure and certain. God's love in Jesus brings you forgiveness, life, and salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christian Church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, 
to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, O Lord. To to, To raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. 
graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>